Hey, welcome. What's up, guys? Uh, welcome to this episode real quick. We just have a couple of things I wanted to share with you guys, but the most exciting one I'm going to start off with. So let's talk about that very first one. So that very first one that I'm really excited about is the fact that Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is actually being ported to the Nintendo Switch. And I couldn't be more excited for it. This was a game that I wanted to play, never actually got the chance to, and so it's really cool to see that it's actually being ported over to the Nintendo Switch, but besides that, it's also going to be ported over to the 3DS, which I have both. I have a Switch, I have a 3DS. So I can actually enjoy playing this game and trying it out for the very first time. For some of you guys out there that probably played it, um, you're probably wondering, well, what's gonna be new with this port from, um, you know, bringing it ported to the Switch. And one thing that they did mention in Nintendo Direct was the fact that there will be a new playable level on this game. And that level is based off of Mario Odyssey, which I'm assuming is gonna be New York City, which is gonna be pretty cool. Um, for some of you guys who don't know what Captain Toad is, uh, basically you play as Toad, the captain of the Toad Brigade. And uh, one of the things that makes this game pretty challenging that I was able to see from reviews is the fact that Toad can't jump. So if that is true, Toad cannot jump over objects. So you have to walk, you have to use objects that catapult you to get to higher platforms, and you just have to downright use your brain to get around and solve puzzles. Really, that's what it's all about. But really excited for Captain Toad, as um, we have Mario Odyssey, and so, so far I gotta say that the gameplay with Mario Odyssey is insanely cool. Um, from what I'm able to see so far. I'm still in the early stages of the game, so don't ask me like how far have I gotten to it. I haven't gotten very far yet. But anyways, yeah, keep a lookout for it. Captain Toad being ported on July 13th, 2018. So you guys can be expecting that game to be available for your Nintendo Switch. Another thing that's actually pretty cool is that earlier today I tweeted out that I was going to try and swap my Project 5 SIM card from my Moto X4 to my Nextbit Robin, which now the SIM card is currently in this device, and it is actually running flawlessly. Now, uh, one of the things is, is that it is only using T-Mobile's network. Um, oh, I put my fingerprint on there. I'm trying to show you guys that it actually has um, Project Phi, so you guys, I don't know if you guys can see that up there, Project Phi. Um, it's actually being used on this device. And um, so, I gotta say, it uses T-Mobile's network. So it doesn't have that smart switch technology, obviously, because the bit Robin is not a supported device to actually be used on Project Fi. However, yes, you can. And I didn't have to plug in any APNs or anything like that. I just simply set it and forget it, and it just started working. Um, again, it's only gonna be using T-Mobile's network because it can't smart switch between T-Mobile, Sprint, US Cellular. But I'm okay with that because I have a lot of other unlocked devices that I can use with Project Fi as it's my secondary phone line. So having a secondary backup device from my daily driver, which is the HTC One A9. Um, yeah, I can seamlessly use this. Um, I have tested it out in my Honor 8, uh, but I prefer to use the Nextbit Robin for right now. It's a really unique phone. I like this phone. Kind of sad that the cloud, um, the cloud storage for the Robin has been shut down since uh, Nextbit was bought out by Razer. So Razer pretty much runs everything now. Um, but still, pretty insane cool device. Hasn't gotten any updates yet at all whatsoever. It's not gonna get Android Oreo for those people who have the Nextbit Robin, so don't be expecting Oreo to ever come to this device. I think it's pretty much maxed out on its lifeline, and this is all that it's gonna have. Um, what I gotta say so far is that text messaging works great with Project Fi, phone calls works phenomenally good, and then the data speeds is pretty fast, obviously, um, you know, for what I'm getting for it. Um, I tested it uh, against my Moto X4. So with the Moto X4, I was getting like, I would say anywhere between uh, 86 to 112 megabytes download and about 50 to 60 megabytes upload. Um, when I put it in my Nextbit Robin, I'm getting about 40, 40 megabytes download and about 27, 30 upload. So um, yeah, there there is a kind of a trade-off uh, for switching in between, but nothing that's too drastic because I mean, it still does what I need it to do. So with that, um, I will eventually do a review on how it's functioning uh, once I at least I'll at least give it another like five maybe five days and then I'll have something for you guys to let you guys know how it functions on Project Fi as a non Google device. And the last thing I want to talk about is Android P developer preview. Now it's out there. People are making their videos about it. Obviously, they're accommodating for a top notch, top notch making its way to Android. How frustrating can it be for some people who are really adamant about not having a top notch on their device? And like, I've seen it. 
I've seen it from a lot of posts on Twitter that talk about it. They don't want the notch. Why the notch? Why is this happening? Well, I can just speculate and give, you know, a hunch of why. And that's everyone's need for a near um, near bezel-less display and all screen real estate. If you're going to ask for something like that, then be warned that manufacturers who are, let's be honest, they are a bit lazy, may tend to adopt something from one from one company and make it basically spread out. So we all know Apple did it with the iPhone 10, and I'm talking about a long notch. And all the essential did it with a cutout of the front-facing camera. That's not sincerely like really a notch. <laughs> um, it's just a front-facing camera, but. We can see with, uh, with, with Android P that it's going to basically um, support having a top notch where the proximity sensor, um, your, your speaker receiver for phone calls, and the front facing camera is all going to be housed. And if it has a front facing flash, that will be housed there too. So it just seems like that this design, this design language that the iPhone 10 has is making its way available. Asus did it with, well, it's like the Zenfone 5. 5G or something like that. I forgot. Don't murder me for this. Um, but it seems that it's being followed in suit by, you know, uh, manufacturers who I guess are probably digging how this notch looks. Um, now, with that being said, a lot of people have voiced their opinions about it. Um, me personally, I don't like the notch. I don't like that look. But I've never been one who has been like fully adamant of having a full an all screen real estate um, bezel-less display. I've never really had that that need for it. Uh, my thing has always been user experience and um, performance, really. And that's all I really want out of a phone is that it performs well, has enough storage, and above all, gives me the best user experience that it can provide. Um, more people have chased the nitty gritty things and the minor detail things and have made the minor detail things seem so big that manufacturers are listening to this. And so they're thinking that this will solve it to give you a near bezel-less display, a full all screen real estate. This is the best they can come up with is by having a small notch from here to here and that will house all your proximity sensors, your camera, your, your speaker receiver and all that. Um, and so we'll see where this goes with this is a trend that's going to last going on forward or if it will just be for 2018 and die out by the end of the year fingers crossed for those people who want it gone for those people who don't care then good on you for those people who actually want it then we'll see where that goes but all in all i mean this topic has just been really boiling over and i think that it's been pushed um a little too much um, notch or no notch. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think every manufacturer is going to build all their devices to have a notch. Okay, maybe their flagships will, but then their mid rangers have always been, you know, against what other flagships are doing. So maybe it's our time that you guys start focusing on some of these mid range budget devices that run pretty good on Android. But anyways, guys, that's it for this quick little video. If you guys enjoyed what I had to talk about in this video, you guys can let me know by dropping me a like. Tell us what you guys enjoyed, the content I'm bringing to you guys. Um, follow me on Instagram too because I live stream on there sometimes besides live streaming here on YouTube. So you guys don't want to miss those. And um, hit that like button again, um, subscribe button, and the bell option to know when I upload a video. And then that way you guys won't miss out on anything. So until then, guys, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for checking me out. Thank you for all the support. Talk to you all in the next one. Aloha.